Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So as promised in last week's video, I will be discussing today um, my labor and delivery. Me and my boyfriend both went into the hospital at 10 o'clock in the morning. Right when I got in, they checked me in and then they, they started Pitocin. So we started with the Pitocin because I was already dilated. Um, I believe it started, I was already three centimeters and he was already dropping. So he was already in position, everything was fine. Starting getting induced right when I got in. So they set me up and then they started the Pitocin. Um, they started me really high because they wanted to get things going. By three o'clock PM, I started having really strong contractions already because I was getting such a high dose of the Pitocin. And around 3.30, they started my epidural. So with the epidural, I did have a lot of complications because I have mild scoliosis. They actually had a lot of difficulty finding my correct spot. So I actually ended up having the epidural done twice. After the epidural, um, it took about two hours for them to complete it. So after they did the epidural, I was having consistent contractions throughout the entire night. At exactly 12.30 a.m. on October 5th, my water broke. Once my water broke, they started having me try more contractions. I was already um, 10 centimeters dilated and they started having me push. Um, but my baby was not dropping. He was staying um, at station zero, so if nobody knows what the stations are. So if your pelvic floor is like this, so my baby's head was literally at the base, it wasn't descending at all. After they told me that he wasn't descending, they wanted me to keep pushing for another two hours, but I was in a lot of pain because my epidural was not working. I had um, felt every labor pain um, that anyone that didn't have an epidural had. They had put me on on so many different medications for pain because I had been screaming <laughs> with a lot of pain the entire night and I the epidural didn't work for me at all like it felt like I didn't have anything like my legs were numb but every like everything else from the waist up was not numb so I felt everything um, so then after that they discussed with me that I had also been passing some blood in my urine and that it was a little dangerous for the baby and for myself so they told me that if I wanted to that I could start um, setting up a c-section or I could keep trying for the next couple of hours and see if he drops so I was done pushing I was done waiting I was tired I was in a lot of pain so I told my boyfriend and I told the doctors that I w wanted to go forward with the c-section so I ended up having the c-section around five o'clock in the morning so they kept me in pain th for another three hours because they told me that there was some other women um, that were also in labor at the same time that I was three other women that were already at nine centimeters so they needed their epidural first so I had to wait to go into the operating room and get my c-section done it's been hard for me to talk about my labor because it's not what I expected it to be I guess a lot of women have this issue where they think that their labor is going to go one way and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't and it's okay for it to not go as planned sometimes God has other plans you know and that's something that I'm dealing with now and it's hard because every time I think about it it bothers me because I wanted my labor to feel special because this was my first baby and I never knew that I could have a child and now that I do I value him so much. The c-section was really hard for me um, so when we went into the operating room I was by myself my boyfriend was getting dressed to be next to me and I, w I felt so alone and so isolated and I remember laying down I'm sorry, it's really hard. I remember laying down on the table and looking up at the drapes and hoping that he was going to be okay because I did have the surgery and I had all these procedures done and like the first thought that came in my head was something was going to go wrong. And um, he was he was actually fine. Um, 
the operation didn't take long at all. It was like 15 minutes. At, he was born at 5.23 in the morning, October 5th. He was the most perfect baby. He was completely fine. There was absolutely nothing wrong with him. Um, after they took him out, um, I got to see him for a few minutes, but they had put me on so many medications for my pain that I couldn't even see my baby's face. And that's still something that bothers me a lot, is that I never got to have that experience and I never got to do the skin to skin right away. I didn't see my baby for another hour after he was born. And my boyfriend actually um, asked if he wanted to stay with me or if I wanted him to stay with the baby. And I told him to stay with the baby because that's what I would have wanted. And a part of me does regret it because I felt so alone at such a vulnerable part in my life. But it's not something that I can take back. I'm just happy that my son wasn't alone. Because I didn't want that for him. Because like I wanted him to make sure that he was okay and he was with one of us. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think I was going to cry for this video. That's why I have my makeup on, but I guess I was wrong. Um. So... After he was born, I got to see him an hour after. I'll include a little picture right here of the two of us. Um, so once my boyfriend left, they told me that I had lost a significant amount of blood, um, two liters of blood during the C-section and my boyfriend didn't know this because he had already left and they told me um, when I was by myself and that's when I started to get scared that something was going to happen to myself and I would have never been able to see my son. So I was alone and they told me that um, they were going to take me into another room and, um, and they were going to possibly start a blood transfusion. And... Um, yeah, so I went into this room and I was by myself and I started texting everybody, letting everybody know that everything was fine and that the baby was born and my family was already on their way to the hospital to meet him. And then I asked my boyfriend to come, um, over and he told me that the baby was still doing his vaccines and everything and making sure he was going through all of his tests, um, and that he would be over soon. So an hour after... He came, and then um, as soon as he came, that's when they started the blood transfusion. And that was the hardest part of my pregnancy, is that with the C-section and the transfusion, I wasn't able to do anything. I wasn't able to get out of bed by myself. My boyfriend was doing all of the, the work that I should have been doing. Um, and in a way, I felt like I, I was depriving myself in a way of being a full mom even though I know I wasn't because I was incapable of doing those things but every time I think about it it hurts and talking about it helps but it also brings back a lot of emotions and that's something that I'm dealing with now so for all the moms out there or the new moms that are out there that are pregnant and you know you have this vision of you know how your pregnancy is gonna go or how your labor is going to go. You know, it's not always going to go as planned. Like, my first initial plan when I walked in the hospital was to film everything because I wanted it as a happy memory of my life and it wasn't so happy. And, I mean, it was happy because I got my son and, you know, he's okay and I'm okay. But it's the emotional aspect of the whole situation that I'm dealing with now. And I just want everybody out there, all the women out there that are pregnant and are going to go through labor and delivery and all that know that it's okay and that there are people out there that you can talk to for help and that if you ever need any emotional support or need someone to talk to I'm here to help you guys um it's it's been a really long journey and it's been really hard and I know it's only been two months for me but you know 
with time things do get better you just have to remain positive and remember your baby um i know the one thing that helped me the most was i know this is kind of selfish of me but it, it is what helped me is not letting other people feed your baby um I know some people say, oh, you know, pump and rest and get, let someone else take care of the baby. But what helps me is bonding. Um, me being able to be there for my son and be able to provide him with food helped me emotionally a lot. I was actually a lot worse the first couple of weeks and the first month of his birth um, because everyone wanted to be with him. Everyone wanted to see him. Everyone wanted to feed him. And that didn't help me. It was for the benefit of other people, but they didn't know also what I was going through. So it's also not their fault. But just know that things do get better with time. And I hope that this video helps whoever's going through some postpartum depression or, you know, some labor didn't go the way that you had planned. Um, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that this is completely different from all the videos that I have done before, but I do want to help people that are going through the same um, things that I am going through currently. And I think it's really great that YouTube has this huge community where you can just outreach and just voice out your problems and, you know, people have like a really strong bond here, so... Well, I hope you guys liked this video and I hope that you found it helpful um, in any sort of way. Thank you so much for watching and in my next video it won't be as depressing as this one. I am going to talk about my one month must haves for babies, um, what helped me and what didn't help me with my baby and hopefully it'll help someone else as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.